So the first one I did with weight, I was just holding plates. And that one was just like, whoa, that went nuts. I was like, okay, well, that's working. Obviously, let's do it again. This, the next one I did with a dumbbell overhead, mm -hmm. that one again was just destroyed the other one. So it's just like every step, every time I did this thing, every two weeks when my groin would heal, because it takes a lot out of me to Damn, do this. I, yeah. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. It's really not easy. Um, and then finally, I was like, well, I'm going to do it with a barbell overhead. And then I posted that well, one. The, now, the, now the chairs yep. split apart, right? Well, you were, so you had a barbell over your head and the yeah. chairs are splitting. And that's the one that went like, like super viral. Yeah, I got I got a hundred thousand followers in like I don't know a month. Welcome to the Shaw Strength Podcast. I'm your host Brian Shaw, and today I have a very special guest, Mr. John Call, aka Juji Mufu is right here in Colorado. I'm so excited to have him here. How are you doing, buddy? I'm awesome. It's interesting to even get into this room to this podcast. We had to continually stop talking because we kept talking. It's like, guys, we got we to gotta do the podcast, so we got to stop talking so we can get in here and talk some more. And talk more. Yeah, we've, talk more. we've been having a great time here in Colorado and uh, just having you out, man, and, and just being able to bounce ideas and have different conversations. It's been, it's been very fun and very unique. Yeah. But... This is a good opportunity that I'm so excited about for me to learn more about you okay. and hopefully for the people listening and tuning in to learn more about you because you are a unique individual, right? Very unique individual. And, and I want to see if I can figure out more about you <laughs> and kind of <laughs> what makes you tick a little bit and, and you know, what drives you, what you're passionate about, where that comes from. Um, because I, I find that very fascinating, right? Like, and, and, and you do such unique, different things, uh, that, uh, I think we're going to have fun with this. I think you're going to be one of the most fun, entertaining people that I've had in here. And, uh, I, I can't wait to kind of dig into this. So if we can take me back to your childhood a little bit, like, <laughs> okay. like how, how you grew up and, and, you know, what you were into and, you know, different things like that. Well, it's interesting because we were having a conversation about parenting earlier. You have two sons and they're what, seven and five? What was six, six, six and four. Six and four. You already yep. corrected me once on that. Yeah, six and four. And uh, as a parent, you're talking about how you're learning. It, it's, di it's difficult because you got to figure out when do you give them a push and when do you just leave them alone? You know what I mean? And I'm thinking about the way my dad raised me. He's like the best dad ever. Like he's my best friend. You know, if one person you don't mess with is my dad. Like I care so much about him. He's done so much for me. Um, you don't mess with my wife either, Sam, <laughs> or my mom. Okay, my family. But look, there, there's some other people on that some, list. That's yeah, all right. Other, I don't want to forget anyone. But my dad is like, man, he means so much to me. But I'm looking back and I'm like, how did he know? How how, how did he know? Because uh, between the ages of like, I mean, nine and. 12 or 13 i just stayed in my room and played video games i didn't have any friends and i just ate junk food you know what i mean that's, that's crazy that's yeah. what i did and he just left me alone and it's honestly it's the best thing he could have done for me and i don't know if it's the best thing you could do for every child but he just left me alone and it, it gave me time and he was there to support me though so when i was like 13 years old and i wanted to get into fitness and taekwondo Martial arts comes to my buddy was in it. I had low self-esteem. I lost all my friends. It was just a bad time in my life when I was like 12 or 13. I was picked on and stuff. And I made a new friend, and he invited me to a Taekwondo class. And my dad was very supportive in it, you know. So he was there for me when I needed it, but then he just leave me alone. You see what I'm saying? And I had a lot of respect for him because I don't know how, but as a child I knew, like, he was doing things. He was a, he's a competitive ultra marathoner and a competitive like road race stamina athlete, like hundred mile races, crazy things like that. And, and he did, a, he does a lot of different things, but it's just like, so I, you, you watched him do that. I saw that as a kid, but you know, looking back, I didn't know how I knew it was like, okay, he's got his own things going on. I respect that, you know, but he also gave me space. So that's kind of good parenting. I, I think which, my parents are really good. Very interesting because that takes a high level of motivation for him to be doing things like that. And I can only imagine you being his son and saying like, Hey, my son right now is go maybe going through a phase where mm -hmm. he's playing video games and he's maybe not involved in a lot. I could easily see him taking a different route and saying, Hey, let's get you out of your room. Let's push you into this. Mm -hmm. Let's push you into that. And maybe at that point, 
if that would have happened, you would have rebelled in a different way. I think I would have. And fought back. Yeah, you know? I, w- I know I would have just based on what I know about myself and who I am. And I had friends uh, who had dads that were like that. And I hated it for them. I hated it for them. As like an 11-year-old kid, I knew something was not yeah. right. My friends were miserable. Uh, they didn't want to do football or something, you know. They just wanted to, you know, hang out with me or, you know, maybe do Taekwondo. My friend that got me in Taekwondo, his dad also wanted him to do football. And he was torn. He was like, I just want to focus on martial arts. But my dad's also ma- making me do football, and I don't really want to do that, you know. Yeah. Uh, they have a great relationship still today. And my friend turned out really good. He's got a good family and stuff. But it's just like, you could tell like it's your certain yeah. friends. and But you could see that. It's just like, I don't know how he knew, though. Like, how did yeah. he know when was the right time to push and when was the right time to pull? But it turned out great for me because he was very supportive. I got into martial arts. And then I found a passion for, for fitness. That's when I started, like, I got a nutrition real heavily because I figured out, look, if I fuel my body right, I'm going to do better in martial arts. And anyone that started to eat better or, like, take, protein powder or water or some drink water instead of sodas you feel better within days like holy crap i'm way better at my sport now so i'm getting a little competitive now like now i'm like i'm counting my calories and i'm 16 years old and tracking my food using printout charts online and usda index to figure out the calories of food so i was taking this very seriously and stuff but he was supportive every step of the way that's crazy i mean so taekwondo that was was that kind of the first physical thing that that you really gravitated yes. towards. Mm-hmm. So that's what motivated you and was kind of the catalyst to start, hey, I'm going to I'm going to start thinking about what I'm eating yes. and and getting into it a little bit more and mm-hmm. that's it's so fascinating because basketball was that catalyst for me, mm-hmm. right? And I very much it's ironic you're saying that because I thought the same way, right? If I eat better and I exercise and train I get results and therefore get better at basketball. So you're saying the same thing about Taekwondo. Yes, exactly. And then it was motivating, right? Oh, yeah. And your confidence, I can only imagine your confidence probably at that point, especially because that's a very pivotal point, especially for a young man at that type of age, right? Because you're going through a lot. Your body's going through changes, obviously, with puberty. and, And you're trying to find where you're at, right? And 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 gaining that confidence. I know for me, the confidence boost was incredible, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and you know, it, not that I didn't necessarily have friends or that type of thing, but you always want to be more confident and feel better and feel better in your own skin. And especially for a kid, that's huge, man, like huge. And I can't imagine how good that probably felt for you. I think, it, yeah, it was amazing. But now that you're saying it out loud, um, the thing is that I chose Taekwondo. That was something that I wanted to do. And then it was something that I got a confidence boost from. I'm not sure what happens when uh, parents push kids into things and they excel in them. Do, you, do they get the same confidence boost? I don't know. You know, it, it maybe what happens when the kid chooses it and they excel? It might provide a different results than if the parent pushes them to it. You see what I'm saying? I, don't I know. think I, I, I honestly don't know. I think I think you're exactly right because you have to have a passion yeah. for it. And I think being a parent now, I'm fascinated by my boys and and what they want to do and what they gravitate towards and seeing them kind of blossom and and go into different things. And granted, they're younger now. Oh yeah, but there there's a distinct difference between both of them, right? And what they want to do and how they do it and what they're passionate about, what they get excited about. And I can only imagine as they get a little bit older. Right now, we're trying to give them the experience of of doing everything they can right so if they're gonna you know play soccer or right now we've got them in wrestling and they just got started with that and it's it's unique and different so i just want them to have all the experiences and then it's Mm going to be fascinating to see where that light bulb really goes off right and i can imagine for your dad for example he probably saw that light bulb with you it was like okay he found his thing right and then sitting back and watching that as a parent, I can only imagine he, he was probably so proud of you at that time, like seeing your, your diet improve and and the confidence grow. And you're, you're passionate about that because you found what you loved. Mm -hmm. And I had different friends like you're mentioning where their parents very much did force them and were very hard on them and push them. And eventually some of them did rebel and stop playing sports completely. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the, the confidence boost would come in the same way because I was very passionate about basketball I played on my own. I practiced on my own. I trained on my, I wanted to do all of it to be better. And I was motivated because I loved it. 
right? Mm-hmm. And you're, it sounds like you're in the same boat where you really love the Taekwondo and it. And that was the catalyst that fueled all this yeah, and gained the confidence. And you know, I mean, it, uh, um, it, it, like I said, that transition I imagine was pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, it, see, he's, he highly values exercise. Like he's a competitive, uh, stamina athlete. So to see me choose something that was actually physical, that, that was good for him. It was like, yeah. okay, cool. My son chose something that's like yeah. revolved around I get more of the strength and flexibility and acrobatics and stuff. It's different from stamina, but hey, it's still exercise. It's still fitness. So that was that was good that I chose. But also, I feel like everybody on the planet should at least prioritize some sort of physical activity because it's a hygiene. Uh, exercise is a hygiene. I'm sorry. It's just like it's just like eating. It's just like using the bathroom. It's just like sleeping. You need exercise to be a human like as a human is supposed to be if the blood doesn't get moving if you're not sweating if the you know just like Jacqueline said it's like everything in your body is circulation your hair your nails your skin that all that is is just blood flow how do you get the blood flowing you move how do you move well you move but exercise is that's the key you know he said exercise uh, he said uh um exercise is king nutrition is queen put them together you have a kingdom but see he did say exercise was king so in his mind you remember jacqueline of course. i do yeah. i do if yeah. you guys don't remember jacqueline please google him F- fascinating individual it's an yeah. amazing dude if he was on social media he'd be crushing it right now yes <laughs> like, i agree he'd be some a, of the stuff he did yeah. he'd be a freak on social media he'd have a very high follower count he'd be in uh, tens of millions you know in a, as a fitness category but like he prioritized exercises of food because you got these people out there who are so focused on what they eat they don't exercise it doesn't matter if you can't tell it where to go you see what i'm saying so you got to tell the food where they go so you still have to do the exercise so i think everybody you need to find something that you can do that just whether it's bicycling or hiking or lifting weights or basketball or taekwondo or just anything physical find something that fits you and just make it part of your life. You don't have to excel in it. It doesn't have to be the most important thing. You don't have to make a career out of it. But it has to be something in there that's regular. I I, I love that. Literally, yeah. exercise is a hygiene. It's a hygiene. I think that that could benefit so many people just hearing that and thinking about it in those terms, right? You're going to brush your teeth. Yes. Right? You're going to take a shower. You're going to eat. The, these are things that you do. And I, I've said kind of very similarly, my my whole career that i think everybody should work out Mm -hmm. in some way and again now you're saying just exercise so it's some movement Mm -hmm. right that where you're being physical but our bodies were not made to just sit in a chair and not do anything absolutely not that that's horrible so it's it's that's powerful man yeah that's one of the most powerful things i think that that people can probably take away such a gem that's awesome yeah i love it i well, love it so you did you start thinking about that early on or, or was that something that kind of came over time or you've developed through what you've done after well exercise well training became the most important thing pretty quick to me like when so we're ta- talking 16 15 16 17 you're earlier like okay. the moment i got on taekwondo that was it i'm done like this is the thing for me um, it transitioned to other things later, but I knew that was the most important thing. It wasn't until later that I was able to say something like, oh, exercise is a hygiene, and then be able to understand why it's important for everyone too. Makes you sense. don't have to be a high-level athlete. Like I said, you don't have to train like a Brian Shaw, you know? But I think there's, when you say it's a hygiene, it also kind of links it into your everyday life because people have fridges for food. They have toilets in their home. You don't, if your toilet stopped working or you didn't have one, it, you would, it would be crazy for you to think, I have to leave the house every time I use the bathroom. Yet people go to the gym still. They still leave the house to go to the gym every day. This is why I think doing something like building a, a home gym, I mean, our, our home gyms are a little extravagant. You know, that's well, yeah. it's what we do. But <laughs> I have people email me and message me all the time, be like, man, I took so much inspiration from your home gym that now I got my own in my house. And it's, it's, I love those messages so much because they're like, it was the best decision I made. And I try to make sure that I, I tell people when I'm talking about my home gym or in my home gym, I'm talking about them building a home gym. You literally need only just a little bit of space, maybe some parallettes, a pull-up bar, some, a place to do push-ups, a kettlebell, a couple bands, and you can get exercise as a hygiene and it'll make you feel so much better and if you want to take it to the next level you can get a little squat stand a barbell and some plates maybe a pair of gymnastics rings 
peg wall for the for the wall vertical organization put a couple of things on there it needs to be in your home it needs to be there you can have a gym membership too because a lot of people are like oh you need one or the other no it's not an one or the other it's yeah. both yeah. i still have two gym memberships brian do you really i do wow that's and crazy. i still have my home gym you yeah. see what i'm saying it's not one or the other you have it it's just it's all there well it's readily accessible yeah. too right and mm-hmm. and you by having it at home and again yes both of our home home gyms what you know like they're they're crazy and extreme and both of us are super passionate about yeah. that which is amazing and i love you for that but it's also what you're saying is very true because i didn't start with much right right what i started with was very minimal very minimal out of a garage me too right? and i'm i'm not so you don't have to have extremes it's just start with a little bit and then if you do like it you can add something else and you add something and over a long period of time especially if you want it to grow then you can save up or or whatever you want to do to to add it but if you also create the situation where you don't have boundaries Mm -hmm. and you then then those boundaries meaning i don't have to get in the car and go to the gym well guess what i've got minimal time you take out the drive time you go out to the garage boom you're done exactly you're you're right there so maybe you have time you want to drive to the gym which is a great example or you need a little bit of a change of environment yeah right or maybe it's a simpler workout and some some of the workouts you plan to do at home yes because you have less time during the week exactly or or whatever exactly you kind of open those doors for yourself and then the excuses that you could potentially feed yourself now go away. Exactly. I love hearing it from you because I say it. I'm like, am I only one that gets this? And then you're saying it exactly like what I say. It's like the moment that it's like, why do I need to go to gym membership? It's like, dude, the moment you just have like a barbell and like 60 to 80% of your one rep max and deadlift worth of cheap plates and, and then some rings, you have them sitting there. Okay. It's like, well, I'm not going to use them. I'm gonna, no, trust me. You put them there. Eventually you're going to go, Oh, wait a minute. Now's a good time to go ahead and use those. So now you're mixing and matching. You're doing some work at home and some work at the gym. It opens up a lot of doors, like you said. Absolutely. And it's amazing. You know, some of the craziest things, like I didn't know this, but, you know, I met some people that have big public gyms. They're big figures. And it's like they still had workout equipment in their garage. I'm like, why do you have this? This was like six or seven years ago. I hadn't really put the pieces together. I had my own home gym, but I didn't understand why they had this huge gym they owned. And they still had like some equipment in their garage that they use. It's like, why do you have that? Do you even use that? They're like, yeah, I I use it twice a week maybe. I'm like, but you have a whole gym. He's like, so? He's like, I sometimes I just want to work out on my own and it's convenient. And sometimes I go to my gym and people bug me or poke me. And sometimes the after hours aren't convenient for me. So it's just like, again, it's like sometimes you go out to eat. Sometimes you cook at home. Sometimes you go out and work out. Sometimes you work out at home. I think everybody needs some sort of piece of exercise equipment at home. And I'm talking about like 50 bucks will get you a starting point. And I'm telling you what's once you set up a space and you put a couple pieces there, you're going to get addicted and then you're going to spend all of your money on gym equipment. I mean, Brian, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know that everybody. Will oh do that, my but, God. But it, get, it gets you though. That, that it's the, funny. Yeah. It's so funny. You say yeah, that it gets addicting thinking, thinking back, like I, I went into strength and condition. That was kind of my first passion out of college. And, uh, I was working down at Arizona state and, and Joe Ken was down there at that time. And I remember we would walk into the facility at ASU for all the football players, all the athletes, but man, the, the, the weight room was incredible, right? I don't even know, multi-million dollar facility, all the layout, everything's yeah. there. And we would go train in his garage. Awesome. Right? So we'd go out and he had the setup in his garage. And I remember doing these workouts down there. It was very hot. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I used to think, never ask the question, never ask the question of why don't we train in the weight room? But I think, I think for him, probably so many hours were spent there with athletes, training athletes, whatever you need a different change of environment. But for him, it was like, Hey, we're just going to go train in my garage, get out of it. Right. So he had this whole setup and it was like some of the most fun workouts looking back. It's like, man, a life, it was just good. (laughs) It was good. But, but having that change of environment, I think is, is, great for people but also having the accessibility where the excuses can go out the window and you can do something again if it is going to be a hygiene like you're saying that people apply that then you need to have it like a refrigerator Mm -hmm. right or 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 you need to have it like a toilet yeah right it's there 
And you can use it. I love that. I love that. And, uh, you know, just to throw even more excuses out the window, because I know some people are listening are like, well, I really don't have a place in my home for a gym. Well, I can, I can tell you this. The, my first working out at home experience with weights, right? Because I come from Taekwondo background. I transitioned into something called tricking, which is underground acrobatics, flips, twists, kicks, tricks. Basically, when you practice tricking, it's really hard to find a gym that's open all the time. So you end up finding fields or spaces and you start looking for places out in public parks to kind of train your moves on, right? So I kind of had that idea in my head like you can train outside you can go to a playground and do pull-ups or something right so but i started lifting weights in my dad's garage i had a barbell and some plates at what age uh so i had i worked at a gym early on and when they liquidated i bought the barbell that i used all the time and i got some plates so i started lifting weights actually at home because i spent most of the time either outside training in fields or hanging up rings in playgrounds and doing gymnastics rings training and at gym memberships i started training at my parents' garage with that barbell and plates when I was like 23 or 24. Okay. So a little later, and all I had was like barbell and plates. I'd wake up before work or school, and I'd do workout with that, just like shoulder press, deadlift, some other exercises. At a certain point, my dad told me that uh, a pipe underneath the house broke or something, and, <laughs> and he blamed it on me. He's like, you can't lift, you can't do this anymore. Like, you can't lift weights in the garage anymore. I was like, Dad, why not? He's like... Because I, th- I think it ruins something. It's expensive. So it's like, <laughs> all right, so now what? All right, so what, you know, n- now my excuse is like, okay, my dad won't let me anymore. You know what I did? I threw that crap in the back of my car, and I drove to a place and started lifting in abandoned cul-de-sacs. That's awesome. I mean, there's and there's videos of me doing that online. People that have been following me for a while will remember the cul-de-sac videos. That's what that was about. I was throwing my gym equipment in the back of a car, finding places that were, you know, empty, empty parking lots, places where I, you know, I wouldn't get kicked off and I just do my workouts out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you can, you can have some gym equipment and you can find places just to kind of drive to that are secluded True. and you can just be yourself. You know, yeah. if you don't feel like you can be yourself at a gym, trust me, you find an abandoned cul-de-sac and there's not a soul in sight. You can be yourself out there with a barbell and some plates, playing some loud music on a boom box and having like a gallon of water with you, you know, you're honestly, man. So it's, I'm not shocked by this with talking with you, but if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Right? So like when I was in college, to, just to piggyback what you're saying, I had a Bowflex, Bowflex. You, I'm sure you remember that. Oh like, yeah. Bowflex. So Bowflex as a piece of my living room furniture. Yes. Right. So I, I had that in my, cause what would happen is the gym, the college gym would close. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what if it's closed and I want to train or like I get done with practice and they're shut down and I want to do something extra. So literally a bow flex in my living room. Same story with the parents' garage, except for me, it was Atlas Stones breaking the <laughs> entire garage floor, <laughs> which was bad. And I'm sorry about that, mom and dad. I will say that, but I am actually sorry. Have you ever told anyone that story? That that it, I, I've mentioned it to people, not on this podcast. Okay, tell yeah. us a little bit more about it. These you had Atlas Stones in your garage. Oh, I had and you just I had dropped them on their concrete. No, no, no. I I had built <laughs> up a rubber and plywood platform, mm-hmm. which I thought would be adequate. I genuinely thought it would be adequate, and then it was some day I was training and and uh, dropping the stone down on that. But it, you know, I mean, I had built it up probably at least three layers of plywood and three mats. I I thought it was good. I thought we were good, <laughs> and then I saw some dust come out, <laughs> drop it in dust, and I was like, that's not. No. I, obviously there wouldn't be <laughs> dust and then i discovered there was a massive like <laughs> crater under there of, oh god i would have you know, killed you oh yeah they're, they're, <laughs> to be fair my parents are very understanding with <laughs> me taking over their garage breaking their garage floor etc cetera, etc cetera. so they never got mad and kicked me out but then it, i needed more room and you know mm-hmm. you get older and it's like okay i'll go get my own place or yeah. whatever but uh very much the same story man so your transition from it sounds like from at a young age, Taekwondo, then you got into different stuff where you yeah. need to do some creative training. I'm, it sounds like though you, you got into it and just went with it. Yeah. So, so you pretty much rolled through until your early twenties and, mm-hmm. and, uh, got in into that where you were filming a lot of stuff very early on. Oh, I was filming stuff back, uh, when I was like 15. 
Just just like because nineteen ninety nine two thousand, we had the giant cameras that our parents had. We'd borrow and start yeah. filming funny videos and a VHS. Out. Like yeah. a v- that's awesome. Yeah, and then we switched to the digital eight, I think, and then it was like a different type of format, and then it went to, um, I think it was either hard drive, the handy cams. I mean, I went yeah. the whole way, man. So just kept it was just something you were interested in. Oh yeah, training. We, we love making videos. We used okay. to make training samplers, was what we called them. Now was this, montages. Was this you guy and 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 people that were training with you? It or was, was it was it mainly just you and you would set it up while you were training by yourself? It, it started with me and my buddy, and okay. then uh, and, and then it just became me. And then what happened was, um, I st- I with tricking, you know, the acrobatic stuff. There, mm-hmm. the, there was a community online like two thousand. So I opened my own website and created my own community, my own forum. Okay. I don't know. I think I got lucky because for some reason it was like an overnight success. It's like I opened this thing and then it just flooded with people. And I met a lot of people in that time I'm still friends with today. So a lot of people know I'm friends with Antoine Vaya. Yep. He's an IFBB pro bodybuilder. He's competing on the Olympia stage this year again. Yeah. And uh, I met him through that. He, uh, the first time I opened that website back in May of 2002, he emailed me. This guy from Canada sends me an email. And he's, he, he wasn't even bodybuilding at the time. That's crazy. And he's just like, wow. I, it was a weird experience for like like a 16 year old kid, like at that time before social media existed, this was like six or seven years before YouTube was even like a word. Yeah. And I was like, this guy from Canada has messaged me. So he found your website. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is and crazy. You guys are literally still friends now. I know we that. Are, yeah. We are. Yeah, we yeah. are. It's, it's funny how that worked out. We're still friends and our paths have kind of like crossed and come together again several times and we yeah. talk every day. He's a f- awesome dude. And I mean, it's great friendship, but, um, the thing is with the, with the tricking, like I opened that website community. So the videos that we would film early, we'd post on there and we'd share in our little community on our forums. The forum at the time got up to like 10,000 members, which is good for us. That's a amazing. It was a well, big forum, forum. forums were a big deal. They were. That was where, I mean, you were going in and strong. And I remember that everybody was checking the forum. Mm-hmm. Like, and so I can imagine if you had, the, you probably one of the top. Forums it was the biggest one. The biggest one. It was one. easily number one. Yep. Yeah, that was because it was such a, a big niche deal, sport. Like, you know? So people were, were people coming in and kind of posting their own video mm, oh yeah. of what they were doing, and then mm-hmm. everybody would co- kind of comment and respond. And, and gatherings is what we called them, like little events would get together, and you'd have like 30 or 40 people like show up the plan, like kids would show up in Toronto or or Ohio or Florida or you know, Texas. And you would all plan to get together. Yeah, we would plan That's it. Awesome. They were all planned through my forum. That's so cool. It's all before Facebook. So it was great, but we all post our videos. So that that's where we were putting our videos before Instagram, YouTube, anything like that, you know? Absolutely. Now, as far as the weight training goes, like how'd you go from Taekwondo to the acrobatics? You know, because the acrobatics was the natural progression from Taekwondo because I like the flashy stuff. And the first time I saw the videos online, I was like, oh, that's that's what I really want to do. I want to do that. And then, you know, observing the other people that would practice that sport, I was like, wait a minute. Every professional athlete from any other sport in the world, I think they lift weights to get better. And nobody in this activity is doing that. So I wanted a competitive edge. It's like, I'm going to lift weights and improve my strength, and that will help me. The thing is, I got addicted to strength training. That's and then, awesome. And then I took it to extreme because, as you know, you can strength train too much for a sport. Of course. I overdid it, and it actually made my acrobatics worse, but it made me bigger and stronger, and then I like that too. You know? That's so now, interesting. Yeah. And then in my but at mid- the beginning, it was probably helping. Yeah, as you were getting a little it, bit stronger, oh, it was making you oh, better. Oh, it helped me a ton. But you fell in love with that as well. Yeah, it stopped helping can- very quick. <laughs> yeah. You know, it helped a ton there for about maybe up to a year, but then it very yeah. quickly stopped helping me because then I was bit by the weightlifting bug. I loved it. Interesting. And then I did that up until my mid twenties. And I was like, man, I'm tired of training two hours a day. And I look like a normal guy because I was still trying to keep my body weight low. Right. Okay. For my sport. It's like, I can't put on muscle. I, so I was very focused on uh, being very lean, very light for my sport and using the strength to excel. I couldn't put on mass. I was like, man, I'm tired of training two hours a day. Yeah. I want to, you know, I'm almost in my mid, I'm almost in my later twenties and now I want to look like I work out. So I knew how to do the bodybuilding stuff. I just never applied it. So I applied bodybuilding methodology and started increasing my calories and I just ballooned up. That's like, crazy. Very quickly. And then it was just like, okay. And then now so I'm a training, bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah. So were you training more for explosiveness mm-hmm. when you were doing that? Because I mean, that requires a tremendous amount of explosive power to do oh, yeah. some of some of the the i mean if you guys haven't seen this this is like some of the stuff you have done is ridiculous 
mm-hmm. right? Like the way that you explode off of the floor and flip and, and I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, but also looking at it from a pure athletic standpoint and strength standpoint, you getting stronger would allow you to be more explosive. Oh yeah. Right. But as your body weight would go up, then that would diminish. Right. So it's kind of this point of what do you want to do? Which direction do you want to go? So it's interesting that you get into that. It's, it's making you better, but then you want to go into bodybuilding um, and look, look the part, so to speak. Exactly. So you kind of blossom into that, Mm -hmm. which I'm imagining kind of opened up different doors. It opened up a lot of doors and that's why I continued with it to this day. Okay. You know, so that started in my late twenties. I'm in my late thirties now. The moment I started to put that muscle on and I kept a large amount of my repertoire of skills, suddenly I'm the large dude that can do flips. That's a category that never existed really. You created it. I, I think Basically. I did. I, well, I don't know. I coined I'm saying it right now because you did. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. Well, at the time I was like, I can't think of anyone that looks like me that can do my moves. No. And anyone that can do my moves doesn't look like me. No. So I was like, if you had to compare both at the same time, I don't see anyone else doing that. So that's kind of what I did. But then, you know, I started, I kept up making the funny videos because it, you know, because I was a kid, I made funny videos and training videos and mix it too. So I was still making my funny videos. Then I'm the large guy that does the flips. And then the base of athletics. And as you know, this being an athlete yourself, your basketball background, your, your general athletics and all that experience really helped you extend your strongman career but gave you a library to pull from to help you solve future problems you see what i'm saying 100 percent. yeah i mean you 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 build that foundation Mm -hmm. right and especially if you have an athletic foundation you can you can excel then when you get into strength training you have that base to draw from right so you can get stronger you can apply it and and like you said for me it made a really easy transition i don't want to say easy but it was kind of easy getting into strongman because i was already athletic i was already strong now i hey you want me to to run with some weight and you want me to carry this and move this and it it just was already fun already stuff that i was already interested in i was already doing kind of but then i kind of took it to the next level and was able to grow into my frame with strongman right and that took time but also to excel in the sport I had a great base to come from, yeah, right? So that that was um, good for me. And I, I understand from you, it's kind of like you're, you're, you're essentially so athletic at this point, and now you're putting on more muscle so you can maintain a certain amount of that mm-hmm. as you get bigger. And now you've got a great physique to go along with all of your athletic talents. Let's mm-hmm. just say that, right? Like all these different things you can do, which now makes you unique. Yeah. Very unique. Well, <laughs> right? It makes it fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, it's is, it, it, it kind of fun having my body. Honestly, sometimes I'm like, wow, this is pretty useful. It's pretty cool. Like, the flexibility is amazing. If you guys haven't built any level of flexibility, it's pretty dope when you have it. Like, yeah. it's, it's so useful in everyday life. And, and like, we we're talking about grip strength. Grip mm-hmm. strength is also super fun and useful. Like, when yes. you got to grab a bag of flour off a shelf, and you're just like, I just grabbed that crap with one hand. No problem. Like, this yeah. is so cool. I'm like an animal, you know what right. I mean? It's so fun having these physical qualities, you yeah. know? I got a question for you, Brian. Yeah, We're me. talking about having an athletic background before becoming really specialized in sport. And from what I understand, most of the people that run programs for their country, for the like the Olympics or for any sport, any competitive sport, they tend to have general physical preparation. And this was before the word was used in like powerlifting and strongman. They had GPP back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s to create a foundation for more specialized athletes and to kind of maybe determine kind of which direction to take some of these kids to give them some direction. I'm trying to think, do you think there's probably more examples of professional athletes that have an athletic background versus ones that just start in the sport from the beginning? Big from the get go and went on because like even like um, Ronnie Coleman did he play football or something in bodybuilding he did uh, powerlifting and football I believe yeah and football is yeah. very athletic yeah and Phil Heath was a basketball player basketball player. you're a basketball player yeah Eddie Hall was a swimmer yep. Thor was a basketball player yep it seems like I can think of more examples of guys that have kind of like a general fitness yep. or general athletic background uh, who became specialists and excelled in their sport than people that just started in their sport. From the beginning and went on am i wrong or i'm just asking you like from your I observation no that's a, that's a great it's a great point to bring up 
um, and just thinking about it, you know, kind of off the top of my head right now, all those examples are great examples. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't change it for me, right? Coming in, strongman is is an interesting sport because it's been around for a, a significant amount of time as a what has grown into a sport kind of started as a tv show and then it grew into a sport where the competitors used to show up in the early days and you just got the events and you never trained for it and you showed up and just did it right and mm -hmm. then it's it's changed where now the equipment's very readily accessible you can train for these events you can prepare adequately and come in which has now prompted a different generation of competitors where they have access to start potentially with strongman. So maybe they're getting access earlier and they can do it. Whereas even for me, I had to work really hard to get my equipment set up. I, I, you know, coming from basketball, even if I wanted to go into strongman first, I don't know that I could have because it wasn't something that was accessible to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I couldn't go to a gym where the equipment was really there, right? That yeah. wasn't, that wasn't something. Whereas now this will be an, a fascinating thing to see because you have athletes that are trying to do that, right? But if I could give a recommendation, I would I would say like, you know, because you get different people that will reach out and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever. Uh -huh. I'm, I want to be a strong man, right? Yeah. And I would generally answer, say, go do something else, yeah, right? Go be an athlete. If you can get an athletic base, and coming, not that strongmen aren't athletes, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying do something else where you're building this up and and uh, building your body up in different ways. But, you know, as a basketball player, I think that's wonderful because you have to learn how to move. Right. Right. So I have to react. I have to play defense. I have to play offense. I'm, I'm you know, changing direction. I'm doing all of these different things where a, a lot of strongmen can be more in a straight line. Right, so I'm carrying the weight, I'm running in a straight line. Yes, when you're doing a medley or something, you're having to transition and go back. And some of that, you know, pivoting and changing direction is important. But if you have that from a different sport and come in, it's much easier yeah. than trying to learn with weight with load. Right. Right. And so I think it will be interesting to kind of see how that will change. You know, if there's people, as the popularity of strongman grows, and I'm answering it more from strongman, like you're asking me about, yeah. you know, these different sports. But I think that, you know, a lot of times I was told, hey, if you're into powerlifting, powerlifting can build a really good base to go into strongman. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure that I maybe agree with that 100%. I think that, yes, doing some powerlifting, maybe it's bad to go into something as you're building up a base of especially the major multi-joint movements yeah you're building those up and your foundation is high and then you can get into strongman training where you're picking up moving with weights that type of thing but i think that if you were to compare based on the examples that you're giving and, and other athletes that i can think of they're coming from a different background and then getting into strongman yeah. where they've had to move they've had to be a different athlete and now you're just adding the strength to it so i know that's a little bit of a roundabout answer no, but I'm, i think that it's a great base coming in and and to build from i'm glad you answered that question because that was going to be my question you just said, i was going to say if you had to recommend something for like a teenager yeah. like who asked you that it's funny you a answered the question that i wanted to ask before you even yeah that's, that's awesome good job fist bump man. <laughs> nicely I'll done it, man. I'll yeah take but i'm thinking like you know kind of coming back to you know finding a uh, fun and you know excitement and finding exercise, the hygiene and healthy and just making yep. movement and, and that type of stuff, part of your life. If you're like 13 or 14 and you're like already thinking like, I want to do this or that. It's just like, wouldn't it be more fun if you just kind of like, I don't know, tried everything. Yes. You know what I mean? And yep. it's cause well, athletics I think, I think in general should. is kind of like everything, you know? I mean? think you should. I think it's having that, you have having plenty that of time. Experience. Absolutely. You have so, you, you don't have to decide whether you're gonna be a professional strongman when you're like 16. Dude, you have so much time. And in fact, that athletic base is probably not only gonna be, well, it's not probably, it is gonna be more fun to play around with, yep. but it's gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm also going to go out on a limb and say that it seems like the guys that have that foundation have less injuries and their longevity is better long term. I, I mean, you could, I, I would want to think about that before I answered too definitively, but I think that you're right. 
Yeah. I think that, you know, you have, you have a different foundation. And again, the, the interesting part of this, if you look at me, right, I didn't really start strong man until I was like 24. Yeah. Right. And, and I remember at that age, uh, getting into it and, and kind of building from there. So, you know, 25, 26, 27, whereas now there are guys in the sport that are coming in and they're 24 and they're at such a high level where they, they, you know, what will their longevity be? Yeah. Right. So how long does it take to build that type of base when you come in and then, and then, you know, where, where does it fall off? Right. Right. So where, where, if somebody's at that high of a level when they are 22, 23, 24, where are they going to be when they're 34, 35, yeah. right? Like, are they still going to be at that level where this is an interesting, it's an interesting conversation to have because yeah. I don't know. And again, then is it the athlete, right? Is it their frame? What does their frame have to do with it? You know, like I know the NFL, for example, they will analyze a player at a certain position and expect them to be a certain height, a certain build, a certain weight. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll measure, they'll take all these measurements, essentially looking at them as a machine and saying, we think that this frame or body type is going to have less injury risk. Therefore, uh, we're going to invest more money potentially in that athlete because of how they're built. Wow. So, I mean, for me, I know that it's been mentioned a lot, bone structure, yeah. right? You look at the bone structure and the frame, not necessarily the musculature, but the frame. So a strong man, it's almost different than bodybuilding in the fact that you want to have a big frame. So your, your ankles are big and, and your bone structure is very big. Whereas that would be a bad quality for bodybuilding. You want mm -hmm. your joints to be a little bit smaller and, you know, muscle insertions and muscle bellies to be a little bit different. So that that's a whole different, you know, conversation of how you're built for longevity. Right. Right. So is somebody that's, you know, maybe bigger with a bigger bone structure? Is it, is it easier for somebody say like me, right. Yeah. To handle these loads versus a guy that's built a lot smaller that might be very athletic and quick, but over time, how much are the maximal loads per se from training? I see or what you're saying. So you're, you're just built to handle it better longer whereas someone that might have a better athletic base but is smaller with the wrong frame might just get destroyed by this stuff sooner rather than later one well, and it again depends potentially on their frame but also mm -hmm. from like you're saying their foundation where did they come from how quickly did they get into it you know and, and uh at what age are you handling these loads yeah because there's a i think there's a fine line between coming in too young and then you know maybe coming in too old right like you're you're maybe there's a certain fine sweet spot where you want to kind of get in and you know for me i was very i was actually very thankful i am very thankful that i didn't get in earlier right like huh. and then people would say well that's weird why what if you would have started when you were 20 well i was playing basketball when i was 20 i was yeah. playing basketball in college and i played until i was 22 and then i just started lifting to get stronger because i loved it and then from there then i said hey i got to find something else to compete in strongman looks fun ah, yeah. right so it's fun and again there we go back to i wasn't being forced it's all my choice i yeah. wanted to do it and i wanted to get better at it so you know for you your your foundation and in coming into this i can only imagine that 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 athletic base that you built has probably helped you to have oh my, better longevity oh my too god i think it has yeah i'm very for the number of stupid things i do brian and the number of different things i do and i like i'll have one collab week where it's like i remember it was uh, one month ago i was in connecticut first day i did a really hard acrobatic session with my old buddies 250 pounds first time i did it after a full bodybuilding block i was really surprised what i could still handle with muscle memory and taking care of my body with nutrition and stuff and carryover yeah, There's that a carryover is real, guys. Like you might think you're not training for the right thing, but carryover is a real thing. And the next day, I'm lifting in Rob Kearney's garage, doing his strongman prep for the Rogue Inventational that just happened. He was four weeks out at the time. Yeah. A day later, I'm with Evan Sintapani in his basement doing bodybuilding workouts. So you're just boom, boom. The, that, two days I mean, later, I'm maxing out squats. Yeah, yeah, it's just every day. It's like, how could I have survived that week if I didn't have a good base? Yeah. And, uh, and some experience, you know what I mean? But I really like what you said a second ago where you said, you know, you saw strong man when you're 24 and you're like, that looks like fun. Yeah. Fun. What, what, what happened to that? Why is everyone's like, it's yeah. like you're on social media. Like I got to make a career out of this. You got to make a decision. No, you don't you just try shit. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, that's the word. 
And for me, if I'm being completely honest with you, that's what I've always returned to, Mm -hmm. right? So I started for fun, 100% with Strongman, right? And I I was, I'm not going to lie, I was a big fan of Strongman before. Throughout college, I would watch it. And I started comparing myself to the uh, athletes over there. So I was like, oh, well, he's this tall. He weighs this much. So I'm this tall and I weigh this much. Oh, that's interesting. Like I'm starting to kind of compare where I'm at and and could I be competitive with these guys? And then what are they lifting? What am I lifting? So I was starting to do those kind of comparisons a little bit with some of the guys who were competing at the top level at that time. But for me, even then, I can't say that I knew I was going to get into it. I, I was definitely not that way. And then I just like to lift heavy yeah. and get stronger, right? So especially when I was playing basketball, I started to actually, it's ironic that you said what you said uh, about the stuff that you were doing is you started to weight train. Because if I got through college, I started to love the weightlifting and training more than I loved the game of basketball, which was crazy because I had loved the game of basketball so much. Yeah. But I would go in the off season, put weight on, size on, <laughs> and like, then oops. we would go in the season. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> this is all going away. <laughs> yeah. And I don't I don't like that my shirts uh, don't fit as tight. You know, I don't yeah. like the way I look in the mirror as much, right? So it's kind of I was <laughs> in a spot where I loved I just love lifting to get stronger. Loved mm-hmm. it, right? And I, I, I got so much enjoyment out of that. And it wasn't because I was training to be a strong man or <laughs> anything. And then I got into it. It naturally came to me as having fun. And then, of course, as you get into your career, now now we're talking opportunities. We're talking prize money. We're talking more pressure. More yeah. pressure comes as the level goes up, right? But for myself... What I've always tried to do is I've always tried to stay grounded and I started this for fun. I'm doing it. I want to have fun, right? So it doesn't matter what the money is, what the prize money is, what, what, you know, politics might be at play. What, what else is coming up, right? Like I I've had to, to center myself and say, Brian, why are you doing this? Are you having fun? Yeah. Let's get back to having fun. If I'm not having fun or something kind of distracts from that, Let's get back to why I started. I'm having fun. I love this. I want to remember that I love this. And that always helps, has helped throughout my career to to center me back to, it's fun. So here's a question. Here's a question. Uh, There's a lot of people listening who are going to go, well, I'm going to say this because now I'm wondering. This is going to be a tough question for you to think. Okay. How do you have fun? Training. If you you said, it's always, that's your, that's what keeps you grounded. That's what creates the longest uh, runway for you to make sure that you are, are able to do this and stay competitive. But it's weird because it's like you're, you can get to a point, you're such a, comp- you're at that level where it's like, it's hard not to look at, like, I have to train for this. Like, sure. this is the competition. So it's, it's even harder for you, which means that whatever you say is probably going to hold more weight. I got to know, Brian, like, if you had to give advice to anyone listening, what what's some concrete things you can do like to make sure that you kind of pull back and be like, I got to make sure this is fun. How do I do that? Cause there's a lot of people who've lost that ability to have fun when they train. You well, see? and you need, that's the thing you need to maintain it. Right. So what I have always done is I've tried to keep my training interesting okay. for me. So I, if people have followed me and watched me train, I, I do a lot of specialty bar training. I do a lot with accommodating resistance. So whether it's bands or chains or variations of movements, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, you know, I think that, that sometimes I may post something like that and people may not understand why, why am I doing it? But it's because when I walk in the gym, if I'm doing, let's just say something like a, a rack pull off the belt squat. So I've got a, a belt on, I've getting some resistance there. I've got bands on the front of it, mm-hmm. which is, is making me, you know, work on getting my hips through a little bit more. And then I, I've got a rack pull in combination with that. Just a movement that I started to do, or I would do maybe a, uh, take a sandbag, do it on the belt squat and load it up, do some reps there, something like this, Okay, which is a big variation. A lot of people say, well, Brian, why don't you just take a sandbag and load it? Why don't you just do a regular rack pull? But for me, if I plug that into my training, it's fun. Okay. Right. So I'm having, now I'm literally setting this up and I'm like, man, this is going to be great. We're going to put bands on here. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And I've kind of 
got to that level where I can do those things because I understand how it's going to potentially work for me, but also I'm breaking movements down further than people probably realize nice. as well. So I get to dissect a movement, break it down, and then come up with training modalities that will help that movement to get better. So I'm kind of, I have a puzzle. I take the puzzle apart into pieces. I try to get all those pieces better, and then we build the puzzle back, and it's better. Gotcha. That's what I'm trying to do. So that's how I've kept it fun for me is to have a lot of variation in the training. So I'm not going in and doing the same thing. It's not going to be the same workout. I'm going to I'm going to try to manipulate different training variables. Yeah. Where, you know, you and I were talking about me measuring some bar speed and, you know, getting feedback in that way or, you know, potentially uh like I said with with adding some type of accommodating resistance or changing a movement pattern or changing a tempo, all of these different the changing a rest period, I can manipulate so many different things and with strongman it's great because all the events are always different. Uh, right. See. So now I'm training for this contest, but unlike say, let's just use powerlifting as an example here. Unlike going into powerlifting where I'm going to do the exact same three movements with the bar and I know what I'm going for. It's all going to be three max lists, the best I can do with strongman. Now I maybe in this contest, I have a deadlift for max. This contest, I have a deadlift for reps. This contest, I have a car deadlift. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, like, I have all these different things to train for, which keeps it interesting. And then I can train differently for all of those contests, which has kept me more fresh throughout my career. I understand. Right? So it keeps it fun. And I think lifting weights is fun. Yeah. Right? But also, I'm not going to lie. If I was going in through my whole career and I was doing the exact same thing. So I went to train deadlift and all I did is walked in the gym, grabbed a deadlift bar and put plates on it. And that was my deadlift. I never changed the height. I never changed whether I was doing anything different. Never changed the bar. Never. Ch if I did that, it would get, I don't want to use the word boring, but it would, it would just be like, well, what, where's the fun in this, right? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not having fun the same way. And I think maybe I'm unique in that, that regard where I had adopted a lot of things maybe differently than other guys did. And I was willing, I've always been willing, even as I've got to the top level, I've always been willing to think outside the box a little bit mm -hmm. and, and look at how something might benefit me and then try it. Even, yeah. even though it, it's like, well, this has worked. Well, maybe this will work better. I'm going to try this. Let's try it. Yeah. But again, it's fun because it's like an experiment in a way, mm -hmm. right? It's like an experiment. It, that's the way it is for me too. It's just like, I love making new workouts and, and trying new things. Yeah. I think the variety, I think that's kind of the answer you gave. It's variety. And I think it depends on the sport on how that actually plays out and how it actually like what it looks like for that sport. So for bodybuilding, I mean, I'm sorry guys, but all the bodybuilders train differently, like, and they all get results, right? So that's telling you something. It doesn't matter as much as you think. So you can be more creative in bodybuilding, in my opinion. So let me, let me ask you good. going in that direction. Let me ask mm -hmm. you the same question, yeah. right? Because now you've been training for 20, how many years now? About 23, 23. So how have you, kept it fu fun because you asked me the same thing like i've been training for that um whatever it is amount of time and competing at, at a high level for that amount of time yeah i've done that to keep it fun but for you what's what's kept it fun like where's the challenge what what kind of gets your brain going yeah i got two things one i do want to continue to follow up on the variety thing because i think it's important I, I think it does depend on the sport so for the acrobatics there's so many moves there's so many combos it never ends so it's like you'll be endlessly amused for as long as your body can take it. You know what I mean? That's interesting. And then strongman sounds like it also has a nice amount of variety built in with the number of events, the number of uh, structures, the number of variations. Uh, the sport kind of has it built in. The theatrics of it, the entertainment value. Uh, bodybuilding, like I said, there's so many different exercises you can do and all kind of like just works out as long as you just follow a few principles. You know what I mean? Uh, powerlifting and Olympic lifting are a little bit more resistant to variation, in my opinion. But I think that... That's a, those athletes' specific challenge to figure out how to do that, you know. 
For me, I think the one thing that has really always kind of kept me going, like if you want to talk about use the word motivation, which isn't as popular these days yeah. for various reasons, but the thing that's just like really lights me on fire is, is the feeling of being a pioneer in something. You see what I'm saying? Interesting. Because when I was the guy that was like doing something, I was like, look, I'm a large guy trying to do flips and I'm trying to find answers. I'm like, there are no answers. Nobody. So you're pa you're paving the path. I am, and it's just like yeah. I there's there's nothing I can Google. No one can give me any answers here. So yeah. I have to look over on this side and take what I think is going to work, and I have to look on this side, which is the flip stuff, and take what I think is going to work, and be like, I'm going to have to figure this out for myself. And I like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then I just get I have to be the one to make it, and that's so like that just lights you on fire when you're that's when amazing. you've got something that's like no one else you you can find that can help you with it i love that yeah so you you have to come up with the answers you do and i yeah. think that whatever you're doing whatever is you're working on in whatever area of life it can figure out a way to tap into being the pioneers like wait i got something here no one else has done or i'm going on a path that's just different just take a couple things that don't go together you've never seen i mean it could be bodybuilding and botany for god's sakes Do, yeah. are, are there any like really good botanist bodybuilders out there are, <laughs> are there any like strong man super chefs i don't yeah. know just like take a couple things that don't go together and figure out how am i going to make like or in my case it's going to be like from the same side it's all physical stuff for the mm -hmm. most part so it's like how are you going to combine things or try to figure out a way to make something that doesn't exist you're the pioneer it's on you. You can't yeah. Google this. Sure. Figure it out. That is like, oh my God, right. this is the feeling. And that's the feeling I've always had. And I just, that's the feeling you want. Yeah. So as you have kind of progressed and, and kept it fun, kept it, kept it interesting, kept it where you're kind of paving that path, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. For yourself and being this unique character. And I'm, I'm going to call it that because you're, you put out such unique content, right? And if if you guys haven't followed Juji for what what he has done, it's it's phenomenal. And sometimes I'll be honest, I'll open up my feed and I am just like, what? What, you, what did you do today? Or you know, you've got yeah. on this mask and you're doing this, which it's unique and fun, but very individual to you. Mm -hmm. So as these platforms opened up, right? So you're going through your career, you've created this forum, and then you're accepting of all these new platforms, which have opened up which in all fairness have exposed you to even more people mm -hmm. right and open doors in different ways what was that experience like like is the, it, i mean i would i would imagine that it was pretty natural to be like oh here's youtube that's awesome here's instagram that's awesome i can put this i'm gonna learn this and i'm gonna see how this does and and yeah. you know kind of you know it, it broaden your horizons in a lot of ways it was weird because like remember i came from a website forum background so when those technologies came out i was i was like okay so now i'm just gonna put links to those on my website so i was i was i was using what was i had it backwards i was like see the whole point of social media is to get people to your website i was using my website to go take people to my social media that's interesting it's the wrong way to do it and yeah. i didn't figure it out until i was like almost 30 years old huh. like i was 29 when i figured out i was like wait i got this backwards i started <laughs> i started an instagram account in 2014 so i would have been like 27 or 28 okay. and for the first year i think i got like i was posting once or twice every other day or something like four or five times a week yeah. pictures workout videos and stuff i, I think i got like three thousand followers my first year and then I was like, I posted a picture of me doing a split, which I'd never done before, and it did really well. I was like, oh, that, shit, that's got like 10 times more likes and comments. I've never seen that before. I was like, I guess people like that. So I was like, wait a minute. Let me try that again. So the next time I was like, what, what would be better than that? I never tried it with weight. So I try it with weight. This is the one. This is like the video that blew everything This is up. the one that started everything okay, for me. Okay. Yeah. So the first one I did with weight, I was just holding plates. And that one was just like, whoa, that went nuts. I was like, okay, well, that's working obviously let's do it again this the next one i did with a dumbbell overhead mm -hmm. that one again was just destroyed the other one so it's just like every step every time i did this thing every two weeks when my groin would heal because it takes a lot out of me to Man, do this I, yeah oh it's hard yeah it's really not easy um and then finally i was like well i'm gonna do it with a barbell overhead and then i posted that well, one the, now, the, now the chairs yep. split apart right well you were so you had a barbell over your head and the yeah. chairs are splitting and that's the one that went like 
like super viral. Yeah, I got I got a hundred thousand followers in like I don't know a month. That's amazing. Yeah. Now back then I was I don't know. That's that's, that's a pretty good. You know. That, that, well, not pretty good. That's amazing. Man. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Uh, yeah. So that's the day I posted that. Uh, the twenty four hours after that was the weirdest feeling in the world because. All, it was going everywhere, and I've never seen anything like this, and it's never happened to me. The first time you go really viral, it's like, whoa. I actually felt like I was a kid in school, and I got in trouble. Like, I was like, I think I did something wrong. I was just waiting, like, for the teacher to punish me and send me to detention. I was like, that was the feeling I got. You really? know the feeling where you did something wrong, yeah. and you know you're just about to get caught? Huh. You're just waiting for it? That's what was happening. I was like, this isn't good. That's like, so strange. I was scared, actually. Yeah. It was so weird. And then I started getting emails like, we want to do a photo shoot with you. We want to sponsor you. We want to fly out to L.A. We're a big YouTube channel. We want to collab with you. What's a collab? I don't even know what that is. He yeah. said, well, I have to look up the word collab, you know? I was like, and then I was like, oh, this is good. I'm going to write it. 100%. You know what I mean? So I took it. I was like, I'm not letting this opportunity go. So I was like, that obviously worked. Yeah. So, but I can't just be the guy that just splits over and over again. I was smart enough at the time to know, like, that's going to get old. Yep. I just, now I know the formula. I got to post my videos like I used to in that kind of this way. Yeah. And then I just started posting a little variety of things, an acrobatics video with music, a goofy video, uh, you know, and all of them just started going nuts. Yeah. I was like, I figured it out now. Now I know So did you, when did you, when did you do, start YouTube? Uh, I had a YouTube account in 2008, but really what I did was I just uploaded my videos as so I could embed them on my website. So again, see, I had that backwards, Yeah, you know, and then I started doing, and then, uh, when my Instagram started growing, I was like, okay, I need to get back on YouTube and start doing those videos and grow that platform too, because yeah. it had already gotten 40,000 followers okay. for no reason for the first year that I was active on Instagram. I was like, I saw it growing over there without me posting anything. I was like, okay, so I'm going to go actually tend to that now. Yeah. That's when I started posting videos, I think in uh, the middle of 2016. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And, and, then, that, and then that started to grow. Yeah, and then I well. started to keep up with that and worked in a, uh, and adapted and rolled with that. Because as you know, YouTube is a different type of thing. It's more dialogue driven. Yes. It's more... Uh, it's more collab based or longer format. They're there more to hear about you and learn and just experience it, kind of hang out. And it's just like they're longer yeah. videos. Instagram's more like eye candy, eye candy, eye candy. Which one, you know? which one with both of those as you were getting in, into them, which one did you enjoy more? I liked them both. <clears throat> did I you? think I actually liked them both. I liked them for different reasons. I like you too because people actually get to hear you and you actually be heard and maybe you can be understood. Yeah. On Instagram, it's just like, it's just fun, and there's and the people are there nicer. The Instagram community, people are just there. They're, they're drive-by, and they're nice. Like, cool, dude. Like, awesome lift. Like, <laughs> wow, you're a beast, you know? Like, yeah. Instagram guys just drive-by nice. YouTube, you can get some nasty stuff on there, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. it, they, they both have their pros and their cons. But I honestly like doing them both. How about yourself? Yeah, for me, man, I actually, ironically enough, I started my YouTube in 2008 as okay. well. Yeah. Um, and, and uh didn't do a lot with it really nope. you know it's kind of uh there and and um i was very interested in it and there were different lifts that i was doing so i was i would film myself early on doing some of my training and and to be fair it actually kind of started with some grip stuff mm. you know so i i got into um strongman and one of the first things that that uh I really remember is I went to an NSCA conference because I was a strength coach, right? Okay. So I walked in and, and uh, you know, one of the the booths there uh, was was a Soren X booth and Richard Soren was there. I don't know if you've met him or not, but he's he's a guy that was kind of very early on with grip, right? Okay. So he did a lot, of, a lot of different things and had very strong hands to be fair. But at his booth, he had a Thomas Ench dumbbell. Right. And so I was a young strength coach kind of out of college and I had read about in a magazine, the Thomas Ench dumbbell. Okay. And I was walking through this expo it was kind of a downtime where you take lunch or something like this. And, and, uh, I was like, Oh, it's a Thomas Ench dumbbell. So I walked over no chalk, no nothing, whatever. Just, I picked it up and I was like, wow, that's cool. It's a Thomas Ench dumbbell and put it back down. And this guy ran over with his eyes like this big. No. And he was like, he's like, did you just pick that up? Oh my God. And I was like, yeah, like I picked it up. <laughs> and he was like, well, can you, could you do it again? Could, you know, could you, <laughs> you think did. you could do it again? And so I did, I did it again. It was Rich, Richard Soren um, oh at the time. God. And um, 
I did. He got. I actually have the picture of me no. doing it, which was really <laughs> cool. But but he's he told me at that time he's like he said something to the effect of you have such a gift mm-hmm. of strength. Like your strength is literally one in millions. And he's like, I've seen a lot of people do this. And for you to be able to do that the way that you do it is ridiculous. Right? Yeah. And so I kind of started to piece things together, um, you know, for me at that time and, and uh, getting into, I could talk a lot about this and I don't want to <laughs> monopolize. I feel like yeah. I'm monopolizing. Our I'm podcast asking you, here. Brian. I'm, I know I'm, you, I'm, you're like I'm, literally the first guest is coming and hitting me with questions, which is fun. It is actually fun uh, to talk, but I kind of figured out that I had a, a knack for grip and, yeah. and really enjoyed it to be fair in different ways so i got all the little tools and you know attachments and whatever yeah. so i messed with that you have and your peg I wall film. with the i and- yes i to be fair i need to get it set up in the gym i'm disappointed that you came and it wasn't there because i have a lot of other toys that aren't yet up on the wall here yeah. or or organized the way i want them to but i would film early very early early on different things and it was kind of like okay well this is a good lift I'm going to try to do this and I'm going to try to top this and you know, whatever. And then I would do, you know, whether it's an axle, you know, kind of deadlift mm-hmm. or something like that. And so I filmed a lot of that type of stuff early on. And that, um, again, using the YouTube platform, I did not do it right. And I had a lot of ideas that I wanted to be executed upon and I couldn't find the right person to help me execute. I had some really bad uh, experiences there with different people that you know I brought in and I was like hey I want to do yeah. this and that and you know people stealing from me and doing different things which was bad but you know you have to go through some of these things to kind of overcome them and learn mm-hmm. you know, as I'm sure you're very well aware in different circumstances mm-hmm. but oh, yeah, uh, um, yeah I, I wish I would have done it sooner you can go back and say that I did start it but I, I wish that I would have kind of put up some more of the stuff that I had ideas about back then because it would be to be fair in all reality, I would just love to have more content from the earlier times because right? yeah. I was doing this stuff and I was like, wow, this is crazy, you know? So I'd put together little clips that, you know, my buddy that trained with me, his wife would kind of edit it down on her computer, really simple, basic, basic, mm-hmm. and just put it up, you know? And so different stuff like that. And I thought different lists would go like, oh my gosh, this one's going to go crazy. And then it wouldn't do anything. And you're like, that's a really good lift, but you know, people just don't catch on. So you never know. Um, I had fun with it. I started Instagram a little bit later, you know, on Facebook and different stuff like that. But you know, it's, it's a way I think of it as a way to connect with people. I was just about to say that those words exactly yeah. like two seconds before you said it. Yeah. Yeah. It, which is wonderful. And I think that you and I are, after talking more, I feel like we're so similar in so many ways. Cause you know, I feel like I've tried to, I don't know if I should use the word or like to use the word pioneer with strongman, but I've, mm-hmm. I feel like I've done a lot of things differently than maybe a lot of other competitors. You're have. definitely and, a pioneer. Strongman. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, in in I, I just i like to connect with people yeah i genuinely do and, and it's it's you know being able to do stuff like this or do videos or or put content out where you have a positive impact with people that yeah. means a lot to me and so it's it's you know being who i am on camera off camera you know and and being able to have that impact i think that the I had those ideas and things that I wanted to do, and it's been neat to be able to kind of bring that to life. Yeah. Um, in what we've been able to do, and and um, you know, doing stuff with you and and different people, you meet a lot of awesome people as well. So it's kind of been neat. It's been a neat kind of growth journey, mm-hmm. if you will, uh, to bring it all out there. And and uh, I'm still having fun, man. But again, it goes back to kind of if you enjoy that, which I do, I genuinely do then it's not really that hard, yeah. right? It's not hard to do. And, and it's kind of like, Hey, I'm going to try to teach somebody something or help them or whatever. And you kind of put positive out to yeah. the world. You, I tend to believe that you get positive back. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of a good, a good kind of back and forth, if you will. And the cool thing is like, what I like to kind of give people is a thought experiment a lot of times. And it kind of like makes them stop for a second. and like hits them upside the head. Like, Oh wow. I didn't think about it that way is uh, we're talking about like, Finding the enjoyment, finding the fun, coming that, using that to ground and root yourself and kind of moving from there. But it's like, how many people have actually like set a goal? Like, okay, my goal for the next 30 days is not to add this to my deadlift or, or do this every day. It's like, what if your goal is just like, 
I just want to have more fun training. Okay. Well, how do you measure that? And wow, I never thought about that, but it's, okay, wait a minute. But now you're focused on it. Now it's a yeah. goal. Now your goal is you need to figure out a way to enjoy it more. How are you yeah. going to do that? And that's going to make your brain. I mean, it's not even what matters most is that it makes you think differently. Yeah. Right. And what's interesting is like coming and working with you. It's been, it's really cool because you're super creative and it's just like, it's really fun to see that because you're not going to be creative unless you're giving yourself that license to have fun and enjoy it and just be a little bit more open to it, you know? Yeah. And I came here and he wanted to do all these crazy things. I'm like, your brain came up with that. It's like, <laughs> don't you got so many other things you got to think about? Cause uh, you know, when I think about Brian Shaw, I'm like, this dude's running like three or four businesses. He's running a Shaw classic. He's a professional athlete. He's got to take care of that. He's got a family. He's building things. It's like, and then you get in, it's like, yes, he's got the YouTube too, of course. And it's huge. It's like, and then he's already got like, well, this dude's like super creative too. That's, I think that's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like, I think it's, it's necessary. Like yeah. that's what makes it work to a certain extent is you're allowing sure. yourself to do this, to enjoy it, to have fun. And I think it's because you've recognized like, wait, this is a priority. This isn't just like something someone says uh, to sound smart or to like sound, make me feel fuzzy inside. Like this is actually important. Like yeah. I need to figure out this, this thing and make well, this a priority. And I need to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. No, I, I totally know what you mean. And I, I think that you very much the same realize it was a priority, but also you enjoy it. So somebody could come in and tell you, right? Let's just say that you didn't enjoy it uh, and you didn't love it. Somebody could tell you, hey, it's a really good idea to do these crazy videos. And if you're not getting some type of fulfillment out of that, you might do it a couple times, but you're not going to keep it up. No. And you're not going to put the love and passion into it over time. Right. Because if, if you don't enjoy it, it's not something, well, you and I both know it's, it's simply too difficult to maintain. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're not enjoying it, then you won't maintain it. Well, also, right? so how many people have you seen uh, speaking on that outside? Sorry, I want you to say, yeah. but like how many people have started a YouTube or, or think that it's this glorious and glamorous thing. And it's like, Oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Hey, follow me on YouTube. They do two videos and then the video stop. Oh yeah. Right. I, time, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Right. It's like, well, I'm starting a YouTube channel. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to do this. They've got maybe two or three ideas. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, the next week comes where are we get, what are we going to do for a video? Yeah. Or, and it's not there. So you ha have to have that passion. So I think the creativity and fun has to go along with it. Yeah. And I think for me, you know, we've talked a lot uh, with what we've tried to do is, is it's just, let's make it kind of be part of, what I do and, and bring people along with what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and then it naturally flows right? versus, you know, and yes, you can do the creative videos and the fun videos, which I love to do, but it's like, also I can show training. I could show eating. I could try like all these things that I'm going to do anyways, that people find interesting. Yeah. Hey, cool. Let's do it, man. Like, you know, and I, I can bring people along. And I think that that love and passion for you especially shows up in a lot of things that you do. Now, what I'd love to kind of get into a little bit more speaking on that uh, is how you transition from all of that exposure and, and these viral videos that you were able to, to kind of get attention from and then grow from, right? And then turn it into a really successful Instagram, really successful YouTube, really successful being just just a, a, a personality, mm -hmm. right, and, and, a, and a creator and, and influence, all these different things. How did you transition that then to being an entrepreneur? Well, or did you you kind of think of it one and the same? And then, it, I mean, was that something you wanted to do early on? The thing is that I didn't actually make a dime in fitness for 16 years. It was never a priority. I never thought I would monetize it. It was never a thing. I didn't make my first buck doing what I did until 2015 when that chair split video came out. That was the first paycheck I ever got. I got like $200 from it from a licensing company at the time. Now, since then, since I licensed it, that video has accrued more money over time as it appeared more commercials and stuff it was licensed to. But I, it's okay. Look, look at this way. I had my day job, you know, I have a college degree. I'm a, in biochemistry and I worked for in biotech for seven years on the side. I did my fitness thing and I made these videos for fun. You know, if I stop making money doing this today, the fitness thing, I would still do it. You yeah. can't compete against that. Like, yeah. I'm going to do it no matter what. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who get in this with the mindset of money first, 
You, you see what I'm saying? Like, hundred, that doesn't work that uh, way. So you're going to lo- you're going to lose to the guy that's just going to do this no matter what because they like to do it, and yeah. I genuinely like to do it a lot. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's so, it's, you can't you can't you're not going to stop. Man. Why else was I making videos back in 2000 2001 before I had a forum to post them on? Sure. Me and my buddies were just amusing ourselves making these videos that we had on our hard drive. That's amazing because we like yeah. to do it. I'm going to make videos no matter what. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like when someone comes up to me, it's like, hey, I'm thinking about starting a youtube channel what's the what should i do i was like i don't know post a video yeah <laughs> i don't make a video <laughs> well do also to compound that make a video but but do something you're passionate about i mean right? yeah like, and not not think of the if you go into it like you said that's such a good point amazing point hey if you're thinking only about the monetary side of it yeah. like i'm doing this for money right just like me with strongman if i thought of it hey i'm getting into this to make money i'm doing it to make money not the same as I'm having fun. Yeah. Right. So you're not, and, and that's a great point. You just said, you can't beat me. You can't keep up because I'm having fun. <laughs> right. Like, Cause you're not going to stop. Yeah. It's, it's not like, well, Hey, one of your videos didn't do good or whatever. Like, okay, cool. Well, I'll do another one. Exactly. You know, it's not, I'm not going to get so down. This by is what that. I do. Yes. This is just what I do at yeah. this point. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, you're involving fun in, in your passion, which is so interesting to me, you know, so you have, you're a highly educated person right and so you're not coming into this and and again that's so important i think for people to hear right because nowadays it's i'm gonna go potentially i'm gonna go be a youtuber i'm gonna go be a strongman or whatever but but again it's like i'm going into it for that reason whereas yeah. both of us i think got into it a little bit different ways for sure yeah. but it's kind of blossomed into something and it's really cool because we had the passion to do it right and and put the work into it for sure and we're not going to stop so it's again for me i i was going to train like i was going to train so guess what now i show people how i train and try to help them along yeah. the way and yes it's it's wonderful that i got into strong man and it turned into you know me winning world's strongest man and being the best but also at the same time i loved it mm-hmm. right i loved it so it wasn't like i was getting into it for the end result of that right. plus the money whatever I just like to push myself, right? So that's very, like you said, it's a great a, a way to say it. it's very hard to beat. Yeah. Like you, you think you're going to beat me, right? I love this. So right. you, if you don't love it the same way I love it, you're not going to beat me. Well, also you might, if you're never going to get paid for it, then like, what do you got left? Well, I the love of the yeah. sport at least, you yeah. know? So for me as like, and I think this is important for people to hear is like, People want to make a, a career out of fitness, you know, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, this is the way I did it, and this is the way I recommend people do it. I kept my day job, and I did my fitness thing because I liked it. You know what I mean? And then uh, this, here's the day job. This is the income. And then I started making more money on this side. It got to the point where this money over here in fitness was, I think I, the fir- what I, I wrote a book. It was legendary flexibility. It's the greatest thing ever written on flexibility, in my opinion. Okay. And uh, I wrote it because I wanted to write a book about flexibility because everyone says it wrong. Yep. They just do it wrong. They don't know what they're doing. So I was like, I'm going to write this book. I'm going to change the way people think about this. I released the book. I made more money in one week than an entire year's salary at my day job. That's amazing. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. Now so there's... You, see what, you see what I'm saying? That's what That was my first experience of making money in fitness. But what I'm saying is like, I didn't jump and like dive into the in the abyss like i'm gonna quit my day job and follow sure. my passion it's like my passion took over like it, it made no sense for me to keep my day job at that point because it was actually costing me money and that's how that transition worked yep it was just basic spreadsheet math i was like i started doing the math over time because i still didn't quit my job for four months even after that data i was still like that yeah. conservative you know what i mean yeah so after four months of this I was like, I started doing really detailed math and spreadsheets. Like, it makes no sense to keep this job. So I'm just going to do my fitness thing full time. But that's that's 16 years it took to get the, At no point did I ever really expect or have that as a goal. It just kind of happened. Yeah. Because I was just doing my thing, having fun, yeah. and just loving it and making videos just to amuse myself and, and other people. And I enjoyed connecting with people yeah. and you know like you said community and connecting with people online i enjoyed the friendships i was making i was enjoying being able to travel and meet other people who did this thing that i like to do too so yeah. it was for the love of it man yeah which is it's incredible and i mean you you're thinking 16 years mm-hmm. right 16 years and you're not getting really paid 
If it was 25 years, I would have been okay. No, this is, I that's don't the, care. That's the point. How many people do something for six months? And now if they're not getting some type of results or they're not getting whatever they wanted from it that they thought they were going into, they give up. Yeah. And they're done. And it's, it's that love that what's, what's unique and what I'm, I'm even more fascinated by is the fact that where is that, that passion and love in more people? Right. Mm-hmm. So why, why can everybody, cause I think everybody can find something that they're passionate about and that they love and that they can go after. And it doesn't necessarily have to be for money or for fame or for anything else. Absolutely, it's just, yeah. it's just a something yep. that you're passionate about. So follow your passion. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily open, open themselves up to that. Right. And, and say, Hey, I, I like this, but why not go do it? It's fun for you, right? Like it's, it could be a side thing. It could be, and again, you're keeping your job through all of that. I kept my job. I had a job. Yes, it was part-time. I was able to scale it down because of the training side of things that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So as I did better, I was able to scale it back, which worked really well for me because then I could, you know, have the flexibility to do what I needed to do, but I was still working technically working when I won world's strongest man. Right. So it wasn't this, hey guys, I'm done doing it. I'm gonna go be a full time strong man. Right. I didn't do that. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't it wasn't that I didn't work. I, I scaled back my work as my success in the sport grew. Yeah. It doesn't have right? to be like jumping into the abyss or the pit or or you know, jumping without a parachute. It's like yeah. it's just it it's just gradual over time. It can yeah. just evolve into this. Well and then it, like you said, eventually it just didn't make sense. Yeah. It, it didn't make sense because I had different, you know, opportunities and, and things I was doing. And then I started traveling more and it was like, wow, you know, it's just not fair to the people that, that at that point I was training. It mm-hmm. was like, it's just not really fair to, to, for me to not be there the same way. And so that transition was pretty natural for me, um, at least at that point in my life. And it, it, you know, yes, at times was it scary? Sure. A little bit at times for me, but, uh, you know, it sounds like for you, it was an easy it just made sense, right? Yeah. And you were very conservative, it sounds like, with it, which is awesome, mm-hmm. right? And it, and so it's like, okay, well, this is this door is wide open and calling my name, and it, it only makes sense to go 100% in that door now, you know? Right, yeah. So that that's cool, man. So when did the business, or did, did all of the video content stuff you were putting out there, did that open the door for the business, or, you know, was it, that obviously is a business in mm-hmm. itself, but when did when did everything else, the other businesses, come from that? It, it, it started from uh, writing the book and then you know working on creating all the products I make on my web store are just scratch your own itch products. That's all they are. Every single one of them is just like I want this for myself, so I'm going to make it. And, and what tell everybody what the website is? Jujimufu dot com. Very simple. Just make sure you spell my name right. J U J I M U F U. So if you want to check it out, any of the stuff we're talking about, the books, anything mm-hmm. else we talk about, you can so, check it out. It's a small business, yeah. and it's it's a great way to support me, my man. So. Me and my wife fulfill most of the orders. We sign every order that ever goes out. If you ask for an autograph, you get it signed. We have our fulfillment. It's not turnkey solution. It's not outsourced. We do everything in-house. We pay attention to you guys. If we see you come back, we'll notice it, and we off, we very often throw in free stuff to the people that have come back a few times. Um, all the programs I write are basically programs I write for myself um, to solve my own problems, and then I work with them in a way to make sure that other people can use them too. So yeah. basically, I use the workouts in my own programs, which makes it easy to advertise. Because it's like, guys, I'm doing this workout for my program. It's my workout. It works for you too. If sure. you see what I'm saying, they come in uh, digital and spiral, so they're nice little booklets. Uh, the pants I sell, the most flexible pants in the world. So I have these pants. It's just like, I love them. You sure. know, I mean, they're great. They're flexibility. Well, they work for everything that you do. Right? They do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> again, it's a scratch your own itch product. That's sure. how the ammonia, the awe came out. I, I wanted us something stronger and sure. we made it and there it is. It exists yeah. now. So that's kind of how it all worked out. And Which I, just, I have, what, what I have to say is from all of this, man, I have a lot of respect for that because that is exactly, exactly the way that, that Carrie and I have done things. Mm-hmm. With Shaw Strength, I mean, it started in the bedroom, and we ship everything from here. We touch everything. You know, it's the same care. Yeah. Right? Like, we genuinely care when people order. Because if you're taking your time to not only go on, on the website 
and place an order. You're going to spend your hard earned money to support the business that we're trying to grow. It's, it's such a good feeling. And I can, I could never outsource that right to somebody where somebody else isn't maybe going to approach it with the same love and passion. I'll I'll never outsource it. No, I mean, I'm just, I'm thinking like, it's not worth the money. Yeah. It's just being able to have that personal connection with people. And it right. feels like you're Santa Claus, obviously. Right. When you get to give out free stuff to people. It's like, this dude's been here like five times. And you go look up his order history. It's like, he's got every program but that one. I know yeah. which one he doesn't have. Sure. Give that one to him for free. That's cool. That's a really cool, cool feeling, you know. Yeah. And James uh, told me that your belts for uh, Evolution Athletics, you had like 30 of them. 30 variations because you were so picky because yep. you were thinking about yourself. You're like, I'm going to wear this. I yep. want it to meet my standards. Well, I, and yeah. then it took like an extra God awful amount of time to actually get it to market. Yep. But that means it's a damn good product. Yeah. And that's, it's so important, man. It's, it's like I, good enough is not good enough. Mm-hmm. And that's how I always have said it. And it's, you know, from, from so many of the things that I've done, you know, personally from, you know, sewing prototypes and and doing that type of stuff. Like, do they know your sewing machine history? I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I've said it before, but you know, I mean, the the it's sitting right outside yeah. this room. I've seen it. it's like that's the sewing machine. Yeah, it is. It's kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't really planned that way, but it's kind of cool to have it here because that's kind of what started a lot of everything. Is I didn't know how to sew, right? But I wanted to make stone sleeves, right? Well, stone sleeves was the very first thing. Yeah. And I went and bought the sewing machine before I knew how to sew. <laughs> Literally. It's like, and well, I, I said, put the money down and better learn how to use it. Yeah. And I, I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know anything. And I said I, I um went and bought it and I said, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna make a prototype, man. And it was trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And then I would make some and I would take it, you know, to train and have the guys test it and you know, it's like it, to be fair, it was a project, but I was passionate about it. But it was the same type of deal. I wanted to make something for me that that could work, and then that yeah. kind of spun into um, like the the belt, right? And that was something that I had modified for quite literally almost a decade. You know, wow. like I mean, before before we actually started prototyping the the belt that we now have. Right. So there's, there's a lot more that goes into that be, than people really realize. And it's a reason that it's so good. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm, you know, I, I think that, that it speaks for itself now. Right. So if you look at any top level strongman contest or, or really any of it, the, the guys wear it because they trust it and they know. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and it's not because, you know, we're, we're forcing them to wear it or anything. It's just these guys know what it is right and it's kind of it makes me really proud it really does man it's 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 a cool thing because you know to my knowledge i'm the first athlete that has competed and then has literally gone and competed in my own my own line of gear right wow then the other athletes also wear that's so cool, isn't that? Is it? It's crazy. That's man. an awesome feeling. Yeah. I know you got uh, your line at Expos is very long. When uh, your fans approach you yeah. and they they want you to sign like one of your products, isn't that such a cool feeling? It's I'll, yes. I'll see I'll see people and I'll yeah. be like at an Expo or whatever. A guy will come up and I'll notice he'll be wearing the Juji pants. He'll be like, oh, that's awesome. Oh man. yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. cause I know that like there's, it goes a little deeper. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And that means a ton to me, which means is cool, so man. much to me. It's very cool. Yeah. Or when they bring one of my programs to sign, I'm like, dude, this dude's like reading what I write. Cause, yeah. uh, personally, like if someone compliments me on what I write, that means a thousand times more than me than any compliment you can give me on my physique or my athleticism. Yeah. Cause when you care about what I write, that, that means more to me, but like yeah. that means people care. You see what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, I really cared about this stuff and people care about it too. Oh my God. Yeah. This is such a good feeling. So I know you seeing the other athletes wear your gear at these competitions. Yeah. That's like, it just, I'm giving back to the sport. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes me, ha- exactly. It makes me happy for that, but also to give back to the sport. Right? Yeah. It's not, it's certainly not a, um, any type of like gloating or like, look at this or whatever. It's like, wow like the the and some of those guys probably don't even realize what went into that but it's like just to have it happen is cool yeah right? it's kind of like a full circle type of thing you know and, and to be in it long enough and and uh you and i are so much alike man it is like ridiculous like there's so much more when you start to peel back the layers yes. to you 
um, that I, I'm, I'm blown away, man. I'm, I'm such a, like a, a, I've always been a big fan of yours since the, the split video, cause it was ridiculous. But, um, you know, from there, like growing into what you've done and, and like the hard work that I know, uh, goes in behind the scenes, like mm -hmm. my level of respect for you has gone up tremendously just because of that. And like different things that have been said through these couple days, even, you know, yeah. like we've spent time together, but it's like, man, you know, so much detail and so much hard work and and you know when when you see a video of your yours i know what goes into it and people yeah they get a laugh out of it or whatever but like you you think about everything right and, and you execute on all of this type of stuff and it's not easy to do these things that you do and you're one of a kind right yeah. like it's cool oh, bro it's it, it's brian. like <laughs> it's brian you know, shaw is giving me compliments that's no, a pretty good feeling <laughs> it's it's phenomenal man it's phenomenal and i think that your impact on people with what you've done mm -hmm. and the path that like you said you've paved has been has been great man it's it's like it's you're leaving your impact on people and, and affecting them in a positive way which is which is at the at the end of the day you can have all the personal accomplishments in the world but i think that like from what you've said to me it's like having that impact on people and and you know changing their lives in a lot of ways means more Right. Like it, it's, it's that end result. That's, that's so important. And I'm, I'm very much the same way. It's like, you can, you know, say whatever to me about, okay, you know, accomplishments, this or whatever, whatever it might be. But if somebody walks up and says to me, man, I changed my life. I lost this amount of weight. Yeah. I set a new goal. I have this passion that I'm now going after. And it was, I'm have a new motivation or discipline from you. Like that's, that's huge. Yeah. huge right. And I think that you're the same. I would feel like that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Feelings mutual, Brian. It's, yeah. If people could actually see beyond like whatever you're doing on, on the, on the competition circuits and actually see behind the scenes, all this stuff. I mean, you could see the brands you're running, but do they really know the amount of work that you're putting in? You know what I mean? It's just like the, the amount of care and the amount of just the culture that you're creating and the way you're changing. And you're actually trying to, you're the best ambassador uh, strongman has ever had. I'll say it outright. You are definitely yeah. the best ambassador of this sport. You're the one that that's necessary and needed to move it into the future too. And I, I think it's it's very cool to see what you're doing with it and talking with the behind the scenes guys. He's doing it too. He gives a shit and he's got yeah. plans. He's 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 he's, <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> executing and he's loving it. Trying to get better every yeah. day, man. I mean, there's there's always room for growth. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's kind of like attacking it from that angle um it's really really cool but uh yeah i think that that i think we would i would like to know what your goals are for the future I, wow um <laughs> as we've talked about all of this i mean you've created what you've created and and had the success that you've had you've done and we haven't even talked about your contests that you've done and you know all these different things coming mm -hmm. off bodybuilding now and i feel like you've learned from that oh and, god yes <laughs> you know uh, what I mean, maybe that ex experience, do you have more goals there? Do you have more goals um, in different areas? You know, what What do you want to get into? I think my main goal, and actually this podcast has been awesome to be on because I want to change the way, uh, I want to change physical culture. Um, this is why I'm also working with a lot of different people because I, I feel like I'm trying to be the best physical culturist I can, honoring the past and moving things forward. But ultimately, like, it gets to the point where it's like, for example, I'm talking to Evan Santapani in his car, and I'm picking up gems and pieces from all these people. I feel very thankful and privileged that I'm able to work with the best in such diverse fields. And I take notes, and I, you know, after I, you know, hang out with you for a bit, guys, I, I get out, I get out of meeting with these guys, and I'm like sitting there taking notes and writing things and remember trying to remember a piece of the conversation because I think it's so valuable. A lot of things that come out of all of this. But ultimately, I want to wrap it all up into something. And what I was saying about Evan was he was saying, at what point did bodybuilding become your life when it was supposed to be something that made your life so much better? He's coming from a bodybuilding background. Interesting. But I feel like from athletics and social media and trying to figure out the algorithm and YouTube and everything that we do that people see, at what point did it become something that was your life and that was always just this thing overbearing you that you're not competing with others you're not keeping up when it was supposed to be something that made your life better you absolutely see what I'm this is just kind of scratching the surface of i'm trying to make people 
really understand and feel better about themselves and feel welcomed into fitness exercise and have the license to be able to move their body. And yeah. because that's where it starts. You see what I'm saying? I, I think it starts with that. If you start to feel better because you're doing the right things, all of a sudden it's like, Oh, that's where the, that's where motivation was. It was just, I just needed to take care of myself by doing jumping jacks for 10 minutes a day, every day in the morning before breakfast. Sure. And that was the thing was just, that's it. just any little thing you can do. And I just really encourage people like, and that's, you know, this is, you asked me what my goal is. Yeah. It's very kind of like off the wall everywhere kind of answered, but it's kind of hard to, I don't have a, a thing yet where it's just like one easy, nice bite-sized nugget. No, and I, it's I this think big that's, amorphous thing that I'm still kind of creating and working on. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? I think, I think that's completely fair, man. And yeah. I, I understand that answer because, you know, in a, in a lot of ways um, I can relate to that, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I get where you're coming from and it, it's, you know, trying to think about that impact and the, the bigger picture, yeah, so to speak, and, and how, um, how the impact is going to have a, have a, lasting um change for mm -hmm. for people and and i think that that's it's really cool man because yeah. i think i i would all but guarantee somebody is going to listen to this and and it's going to kind of have that light bulb go off yeah. and say wow you know what i can do like you just said jumping jacks right <laughs> i could do that every day I've done them in the morning in hotel right. rooms before collapse to get cardio in. Yeah. It's just yep. like I just did cardio rooms. I was, uh, sorry to just no, jump into great. something you're very great. specific here, yeah. but me and Sam were traveling out of town to Maryland about a month ago. We were staying uh, somewhere. There's a hurricane at the time. So it was like, I can't get my cardio in. I, I haven't done it for two days. There's no gym in this hotel room. There's no gym we're going to today. So I just ran up and down the stairs for 20 minutes. Like the, the, that's <laughs> amazing. The room. I just ran up and down the stairs for 30 minutes. I felt amazing. I was right. like, wow, that was the, really the best decision I could have made. And I yeah. felt better the rest of the day. I was just like, the, all I needed yeah. some stairs, I guess. Well, and that's <laughs> it's simple. You, to, going back full circle to what you're saying early on with gym equipment and all that, yeah. it's simple. And how many people have stairs in the house? Most people maybe do. Or if you're in an apartment, there is a staircase somewhere. Or if you're in a hotel, there's a stairway. I mean, it's right, it's there if you want to find it. Yeah. And again, making that small choice just to do that. You said you felt amazing, right? Oh, At the yeah. end of it, right? Most people don't realize because they don't take the first step to to make that uh, uh just and again, five minutes, right? Three minutes. Yeah. If you're just beginning, maybe it's it's two times up and down the stairs or I've something. I've done right? an Airbnb where there's just one wooden, very noisy staircase. I was yeah. like, this feels really dumb. Yeah. This was in Quebec uh, last December. And I just went up and down them, this noisy wooden staircase. It was just one set of stairs over and over again. Yeah. And I was just like, it worked. Yeah. It felt really dumb and, and very confined, but it worked. And yeah. I was like, I felt better about doing it. I was like, well, cool. It's done. Yeah. So somebody, <laughs> like, like I said, somebody listening is going to, that's going to be motivating to them yeah. in a way where it doesn't need to be an elaborate gym. It doesn't need to be all this no. crazy stuff. It's just simple, but you can make that, that change and, and have that positive impact. And, you know, it's going to be related to you and the message that you're sending out to people which mm -hmm. is huge man and, and you know i wish you all honestly man all the success and I'm, I'm so happy for you like everything that you have done everything you've gone through everything you've overcome which we didn't even get to scratch the surface on any of the adversity and like different things i kind of wanted to talk about because i know it <laughs> it all has not been sunshine and roses and, oh it never is right oh, and, and so much you shit know, you gotta deal with oh it's it's crazy on the bad, bad times I mean, we literally could probably end this and do a whole nother podcast on <laughs> i'll come back just the the other you know how to overcome that type of adversity but um i appreciate it man it's it's like i i feel like you're a guy I could sit here and just have a conversation back and forth you could ask me a question i could ask you a absolutely question, and we could just keep going <laughs> but uh it uh this has been fun fun my friend i yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed this brian I, and I, the feelings mutual i feel like we have a lot in common it's like wow you know what he's doing it this way too and it's like 
Oh, but okay, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I must be on the right path because Brian Shaw is doing it this way, <laughs> and he thinks this way, and he's enjoying this. And the training, everything. It's yeah. it's a pleasure, and I'm very grateful to be sitting here. And thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hundred percent, man. Well, if you guys enjoyed this, if you got something out of it, which I don't know how in the world you wouldn't have got something out of this. Please share the podcast because that is the way that this is going to get more traction. It's going to get more people and uh, we're going to be able to, to hopefully change more lives and impact more people in a positive way. So appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And uh, remember to go out and be great.